Hey everyone, so quick recap of our Navi 5700XT under liquid nitrogen stream. It was pretty successful. We would have liked to push the card a bit further, but we need more voltage and more power. And I've actually already started talking with Igor from Igor's lab, formerly Tom's Hardware Germany, about maybe doing something, but um, he, uh, we'll talk more about it separately and then I'll update you all once we get potentially a tool that gives us some additional voltage headroom. Their current tool that's out there, the more power tool is what we use for the stream. So we're gonna talk through that today and the 5700 XT LN2 OC results and how it compares to something like a 2080. Before that, this video is brought to you by Be Quiet and it's Straight Power 11 series power supplies. The Straight Power 11 PSUs ship from 450 watts up to 1000 watts, accommodating most of the gaming PC build requirements you'd encounter and focuses on delivering a higher quality power supply that doesn't sacrifice on efficiency or stability. Noise is also a heavy point for the Straight Power 11 using a 135mm Silent Wings 3 fan that can spin as low as 200 RPM for quieter low load operation. Learn more at the link in the description below. So here's the card we ended up using. The softer was the More Power tool, which is available on Igor's Lab.media. Uh, we recommend checking Igor out. He's, it's mostly a German language site, but he has some English stuff there too. And you can download the software tool for overclocking if you want to use it. And uh, it's currently limited to 1.35 volts. That's to protect end users. But because one, we don't care if the card blows up, and two, we're using liquid nitrogen, we've asked him to give us a, a version that allows more voltage. So we may get that later. The card we ended up with, it's just a K-type thermocouple shoved into the LN2 pot to give us the pot temperatures. And then the uh, LN2 pot itself is an EK critical point. So this is an older EK LN2 pot. I actually didn't even know they made these until they sent them to us, but it is, uh, it's, it's certainly not the best one in the world that we've used, but it's actually pretty damn good for this. So, so there's not a ton of surface area and it's not as deep as like the, the cane pen icon or something, for example, but it's still plenty good for this application because the GPU is relatively low power when compared to some of the bigger GPUs out there. And so it's really reactive. When we pour, we've got shots of that from the live stream, but you pour LN2 and it just pretty much instantly evaporates. And to kind of increase the evaporation, we can torch the pot a bit. And that's what we did during the stream to, uh, to increase the rate at which the LN2 was soaking into the LN2 pot. So that's what we use for the setup. So in terms of the results, I've got some charts we'll put up in a second, but for my notes here, we end up running at about minus 95 to minus 100 degrees Celsius, any lower than that, and the memory froze, which was a problem. So we need some memory heaters on there to drive further down uh, on the GPU core temperature. But minus 95 or so is where we were stable. And we end up at 9461 baseline with the LN2 pot on there. And with a, I wrote down a note that it was 20 degree pot temperature, which is between maybe maybe 50 or so for the GPU temperature. So 9461 was the score for that, and we'll go through the other scores in the uh, the charts we have. The final score was 10,687, and then that was with a 2469 set frequency. It was with 99% power, 1.35 volts, and 915 megahertz memory. We could not get past 915 and maintain stability. So the memory bin on our card is not very good, unfortunately, but um, we just we can't do anything about that. That's luck of the draw. So then, as far as the frequency, past 2469, and even at that point, we had issues of stability, freeze, crash, stuff like that. So we need more voltage or more power, or it's a silicon fitness limitation. But there was nothing else we could do at that point. I talked with Igor about it, and uh, I talked to Buildzoid. Buildzoid said, you might need hard mods. And Igor said, maybe we can get you a special software version that can help, but he's not sure. And he's also not sure if more voltage will actually help or if it'll just kill the card. And I said, do you know at which point or at what point we, we can expect the card to die from too much current going through it, too much voltage? And he said, nope. So we might be able to find out. <laughs> we might be the first ones to do it. Uh, anyway, for the results, we have some numbers here for two charts. First one's just the time spy score, not extreme. Comparatively, an RTX 2080 gaming by Gigabyte ended up at 10,928 points, which gave it a lead of about 2.3% over the 5700 XT with LN2, 
We'll talk about some more interesting numbers than this in a second for GT1 and GT2. The RTX 2070 Super is at about 10,181 points. So the LN2 5700 XT ends up about 5% ahead of a stock RTX 2070 Super, although overclocking the Super would push it past that. The 5700 XT Hybrid OC we did was at 96.65 points. So the LN2 approach gave us 10.6% more performance. If we look at our original RX 5700 XT result back with the original launch, it was much lower down at 88.10 points with the LN2 pod on the card though and running at about 50, 60 degrees Celsius GPU temperature, we scored 94.61 points for uh, just point of reference. But this is also with newer drivers and it's cold. As for GT scores, this is pretty interesting. GT1 is more core intensive while GT2 is memory intensive. Both are weighted for the final point scoring. GT1 scored 73.15 for the 5700 XT under LN2 with our max stable clock with GT2 at 58.8. If we look at the RTX 2080 that was mentioned as interesting earlier, we see that the 5700 XT has a higher GT1 score, so its core clock performance is better in isolation in this test. The 2080 ends up pulling ahead with the GT2 score, positioned at 63.7 instead of 58.8. This shows us that Navi is still bound by memory to a large extent, as the G6 memory on the RTX 2080 is accounting for much of its score lead versus the G6 memory on Navi. We think Navi's lower performance in memory may be partly a mix of memory controller performance, as the memory modules themselves are actually the same. So for quick math then, at the end of all of this, versus the original, original 5700 XT run with TimeSpy, as in pre-launch run, we see a 21% performance increase in the, the score, total score, 8810 versus 10,687. Versus the one we tested the same day, but with the LN2 pod on it, and with the temperature at, let's say again, 50 or so, maybe plus or minus 10 degrees Celsius, the increase was about 13% for total score. So that's partly going to be because uh, it was cooled down a bit versus the reference design. So the clocks came up and so it improves there, but also maybe there's some driver difference, something like that. But end of the day, the real change we saw was in, uh, in the core clock behavior, the memory, we were still pretty limited by cold doesn't do anything. In fact, it starts to hurt. So we're still pretty limited by the memory. And that's the takeaway for this. So there's more we can do here, but we need some uh, some help from the modders or overclockers out there to either hard mod this thing or maybe Igor can help us out with that software to push it further. We'd like to try and get more out of this because it seems like there's more there, but we just get stuck on the voltage and the power. And that's, I guess that's pretty much it. So yeah, this thing's coated in Vaseline now. So, and it's got an Allen 2 pot on it. So we might as well just do some more overclocking with it while we've got the liquid nitrogen. There's still a lot here. The Bench was just a Maximus 10. It's our GPU test bench with an 8086K overclocked. So same thing we use for our GPU reviews. And then the card it has the EK critical point on it, which I don't think you can buy anymore, but it does fit. It's got all these different brackets and adapters for it. This one might have been custom made for us. We're not sure the adapter, but it ended up fitting. So thank you, EK, for sending that over a while ago. And that'll recap the stream. I hope you liked it. We'll do some more stuff soon potentially with Stepanzi on the CPU and GPU overclocking side at the same time. So check back for that. Otherwise, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to support us directly. We sold out of the foil wireframe shirt during the stream, but we still have mod mats and toolkits there, or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.